What's going on, guys? It's Ed here from Clicks Geek, and today I am with Rob Warner and Joe Troyer from PPC Ad Lab. What's up, guys? Hey, Ed. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Ed, good to be here. Absolutely. So, um, as you guys know, one of the questions I get frequently is, who should I be prospecting to? Who should I be getting in front of? Who should I be selling? And frequently, my answer is, find out who's running Google ads already and sell to those folks. Cause, because you don't need to do the double sale. You don't need to sell on the merits of Google ads and then the merits of your services. You just already have the, um, the audience there that is a known buyer of Google ad services. These two gentlemen came up with a product that helps identify who's using Google ads and to what extent and the types of ads they're running, the times they're running, the frequency, so much cool stuff. So today we're here to talk about their product, which is PPC Ad Lab. So uh, Joe, Rob, you want to dive in and just give me kind of a quick 30,000 foot overview of what the product is, how it works, stuff like that? Rob, I think you should lead off on that one and tell how like this, this side little project, this, this, uh, this little tool became, you know, the, the crazy SaaS that it is today on, on pure accident. Uh, uh and the absolutely right, Joe. So, so Ed, it's a really good question to start with because it's kind of like the origin of how this thing came to be. We know, like most agencies know, that, as you said, you don't have to Google sell, double sell a Google advertiser because they already see the value of advertising. We understand that. We know that. These guys are our ideal prospects. Um, finding them is really difficult. Building a list of Google advertisers is really hard. Google goes to great extremes to make sure that ads are personal, local, and relevant. So, you know, if you're trying to build a list of prospects, um, it's a hard thing to do. And Joe and I had a need to do exactly that last year. Um, and we bought every product on the sun that we could get our hands on. And I'm not going to name names. I don't want to badmouth anybody. But, you know, if you wanted to find out who's really doing that in the market, you could probably think of a handful of if you go and look at we did we tried everything nothing worked we ended up with just a handful scattered list of prospects oh dear this is unfortunate we have a commitment to deliver this we can't fulfill it but we ended up hiring somebody who then manually went through and was proxying and changing location a whole bunch of stupid stuff just to build a list so i thought there has to be a better way and I hired a guy and I said, here's how I think we could build something. And it's just a trick contractor. Like, I think this, if we do this approach, let's build something, get me a CSV of all the advertising they're at. And he's like, why did you build a CSV? I went, that's great. Could you just add a couple of things onto it? I did another version of that. And about two or three rounds of this, he went, can I put a user interface on this? Because it would make it much easier and stop asking, stop you having to ask me questions every time you want something. Um, so we put a user interface on it. And it's like, actually, this is getting really quite useful. <laughs> this has a use case beyond what I first envisioned. I started to find out a ton of intelligence about not just who was advertising, what their ads were saying, where they were running at the times. And it was a side project. It was literally just a side thing that we needed for a purpose. And Joe and I met up last May. And we talked about our list of priorities and we went, not that thing you've been working that's not really core to what we're doing. That's not that important. Let's just shelve it. And there's something in this. I like this. <laughs> Fast forward uh, nine months, and we have a beautiful little SaaS that, as we said, helps identify any Google advertiser in any market, anywhere in the world, and a ton of other stuff about them that you could otherwise not find out. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, nailed, uh, you nailed something there um, where you had someone going in with different VPNs, uh, different locations, different times, trying to build the list. What I found is that if, if I hired someone to do exactly what you've described, they would only catch if that person was advertising at that given moment that they ran the search, um, if they had enough ad budget, if it was even within their, in their ad schedule, there's so many different variations there. And, and one thing, absolutely. yep. Yep. And yeah, you're right. That, that's it. You think about it. I mean, how many advertisers do you know that have a hundred percent ad impression, impression share, but don't. Uh, so the chances are of your one random search at one specific time <laughs> on one specific type of device, yep. adjusting for things like bid schedules, bid adjustments, competitors, impression share, and everything else that goes in, it's a potluck. You might get 10%. In fact, yep. all our evidence is you get less than 10%. Yep, yep. 
And, and one of the, so, so guys, I've been using the software, I think I'm in month two or three now. And one of the cool things about their software is you can pick how often it does a query, how often it'll pull the data in. So whether it's hourly, every couple hours, every day. So you're getting a really good cross section of, of what's actually happening in the market versus what you might think off of one particular search. Um, and then you can also run it for mobile versus desktop. So in the local market, some guys only want mobile traffic. Others want just desktop or a mix of both. And this allows you to run different queries based on different parameters you put in place. Um, really cool software for, for the lead gen side of things. 